the audience, the um, Charter Commission um, did their study and there was a split vote on it and there was a majority that voted in favor of the charter change and um, that uh, a group of those people are working uh, to advocate for the charter change. And the minority um, uh, developed a minority report. And all that information is available on our website, on the website of Citizens Against Mayoral Politics. Um, it's www.nomayor.com, and that has both the charter proposal, the majority report, and the minority report, um, and a lot, a lot of other useful information that may help you make your decision. The proponents of the charter change um, have not uh, let us know anything about the proposed cost um, for this change in government. Does anybody um, have any information about that? We have information that Bob Robertson has developed for us, uh, and uh, it, that's an all-inclusive number, in, including the salary for a, a, a budget person and the mayor, and the school committee, etc., etc. Uh, the commission apparently uh, is not interested in that, and therefore they have provided no numbers that are meaningful. It, it, it just doesn't seem to make any sense. I, I, I come from a business in this town, and we proposed building a plant in the UK, and there's no way that anyone would approve that unless that we laid out the cost. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. Okay. And you know, I, and I just, you know, unfortunately, I wasn't there, and I, I have no excuse for that. But, but the point is, I sure as heck would have challenged that and said, well, wait a minute. We don't know. I mean, what are we going to, where are we going to get this money from? And how much is this going to cost us? I could, I could never have done what we accomplished without having that information. You can't, how can you make a decision? Unless you know what the costs really are. And, and not just the costs up front, but what about long term? What's the impact of keeping this thing going? And, and how many people are going to have to add just in terms of supporting that? So uh, I, I just I can't imagine that the people in this town would. would and timing, yeah. timing is everything. And in this economic climate, not to have that information available for people to make their decision. That doesn't bode well. Proponents of the charter um, are talking about a mayor and why and that South Hadley needs a mayor. Um, what do you think about that? What is it? What are we getting? What are we thinking about for the mayor? I spent some time reading the charter report. I sat at my computer, going through. There's, it's 42 pages long or whatever. My main interest is in finding out what. Do you need to, what kind of qualifications do you need to have to be a mayor? And the only thing that I saw in the report was that you needed to be a voter in South Hadley. And so one of my concerns is who becomes mayor? How do you determine who is a candidate to be a mayor? What kind of real qualifications do you need? It's not I, a job that you have to apply for. Oh, no. <laughs> Improve your qualifications for. Yeah. Other thoughts about that? All candidates feel they're qualified if they're a candidate. And, and it's up to the voters at that point to determine what their qualifications are. And that's a difficult thing to have happen. And of course, popularity has a lot to do with it, too. Is this a popular individual? And, and uh, uh, great guy or great woman. And, and, uh, Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's the winner. I I really don't know how, how that's going to work out. That's a that's a concern for me because I think about the mayor in terms of being, um, you know, a very political position. Uh, popularity, popularity is a part of it, and I think that in, we're much better off in South Hadley moving to more professional management of the town. I wonder I wonder like you do too. Who in this town is going to run for mayor for a two-year position? And I think about, I would be much more concerned if that qualification, if the one qualification is you have to be a resident in town, I'd much prefer um, to be looking at somebody's professional qualifications, 
to run the town, to manage the budget. And if you have a mayor, is that a full-time job in the sense that he could have, he or she could have no other outside employer? Years, the city of Holyoke had mayors that were lawyers who conducted their private practice at the same time that they were mayor. Mm -hmm. So that becomes another mix. Mm -hmm. You only have a job for two years, and you're giving up your whole livelihood at that point. You better be darn sure you're going to be reelected for a second term or more, or you really lost a great deal. I, I, I guess I would ask the question, if that being the case, let's say we pick John Smith, and John Smith's background is uh, he drives a truck, and uh, now he's elected mayor. Well, what kind of support is he going to get in decision making? I mean, how is he going to be making decisions? Or a decision is going to be made for him. I, I, the, the bottom line is that can happen. Yeah. That can absolutely happen. And, and another part of the bottom line, too, is the fact that this individual, if, he's, if he or she is not very, very careful, the great surplus that we have available to us in the town now could all of a sudden, in two years, be gone and disappear. Well, you're saying that. You're thinking that well, we have about four million dollars in our, our reserve. Yes, sir. Does that does that mean now that he's got a bag of toys that he can hand out to certain individuals well, in order to ensure support for or she or she? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry to be sexist. I didn't. I, didn't I, I did say select board. Okay. But. <laughs> to to a great extent, that's true. If if the council is willing to go along with the mayor and. and uh, that is something that, that without an appropriations committee to say no, uh, that's something that could very well happen. I mean, it just says to me that being in this financial position says, gee, maybe we really haven't done such a bad job in, uh, in this town. I mean, so what's, what's the real issue? What are the real issues? Why give up an independent body that we can be able to give good advice on the money that we have, or money that we should have, or will have, to a group of people who may not have the same interest that an appropriations board has. They're not paid. The other people are. I mean, it gets into a very big bag of worms for a, for a town that's only 18,000 people. It has not been really growing in great numbers. So we don't want to have to do what other uh, uh, cities do that are twice the size of us. I can't say enough about the Appropriations Board and ensuring that this town has been very frugal in its application of funds, whether it be for education, for roads, whatever. And now to just throw this into a, a bucket for somebody to do it basically whatever they please. I mean, we're talking about a much smaller group. I mean, it, it, I don't know. It, it just doesn't. It doesn't fly. It doesn't fly for me. And do the town townspeople themselves understand? We're really talking about cost. And if we don't understand that cost, it's going to be too late to find out. Oh, gee, I wonder why the heck our taxes are going up. What? Why aren't we getting the services we once had? I, I think people have been very deliberate in this town by virtue of the way they've run this government in ensuring that that money got spent, got spent well, and that they put enough away. So if you look even at our current economic times, we're in a hell of a lot better shape than many towns in the area. Okay. Yes, thank you. I'd like to thank our viewers for joining us tonight. As you make your decision, I encourage you to visit the Citizens Against Mayoral Politics website, www.nomayor.com. On that website, you will find the charter, the uh, majority report, the minority report, and some other important facts that you should consider as you make your decision. I'd especially like to thank the participants for joining us and sharing their very thoughtful insights into this subject. And finally, I encourage everyone to get out and vote. The election is on a Monday, April 6th, and the polls are open from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Thank you.